Hi, I'm Dr. David Purvis. I'm here on holiday in Northern Canada and it's a lovely sunny day. It's quite early in the morning, but it's also quite a cold day. It's minus 17 anyway, and you maybe can hear the wind blowing in the background, which makes it about minus 21, so it's quite cold. But lovely, because I'm standing here next to the cottage that I'm staying in, and actually, I'm just out of the wind, and I've got some sunshine on me, so it's really quite pleasant, actually. As long as you don't take your gloves off. I'm wearing my big thick gloves, but to operate the camera, I have to take them off and use my little thin gloves, and that gets the hands cold very fast. The reason I'm making this film is that I was looking at the snow. Now, this is the snow that we have here right now. This snow here is actually powder, so it's not a brilliant uh, example for what I want to talk about. But if you think of the, uh, the shape of a snowflake, if you think of the sort of classic shape of a snowflake, every little bit of the snowflake, every individual lobe of the snowflake has the same shape and structure as the overall snowflake. So actually, a snowflake represents a fractal, or the, the little lobe of the snowflake re represents a fractal of the bigger snowflake. And the reason this is interesting is that it was one of the first profound moments I had when I was training to be a therapist. I was wondering how therapy, how psychotherapy actually helped people. And my mentor, Patricia Clarkson, said, well, you know, uh, therapy is like a fractal of your whole life. If you change something in therapy, because it's a fractal, because it has a self-similarity, if you change something in therapy, then it also has to change uh, the relationship of that thing to the whole world. And interestingly, that feeds into systemic therapy as well. If you think about it, uh, a family is a system. And if you change one element of a system, then everything else has to change to accommodate it. So that got me thinking about how uh, therapy works and how uh, you know therapists can help people to change their lives because of course changing a life is a really difficult thing to do but changing a little thing is not that hard to do and when you change a little thing everything else also has to change so I devised this motto which I still use and I find it quite interesting I say to people you know and you may have heard this in my other films I like to use the the human computer analogy so you know like where computers in a sense, or human computers, hardware, software. And the programs that we run in here are really beliefs, their thoughts, their, their expectations, but really, we'll just say a belief is a program. If you're running a program on your computer, you expect to get an outcome, because that's, if, if, if you run a program and nothing happened, you'd, be, <laughs> you'd feel cheated. So running a program means that you're gonna get an outcome. Now, when I work with my clients, you know, we spend a lot of time figuring out what the programs are in here that are giving the outcomes that they don't want. And I often ask this question, what programs are you still running or what solutions are you still running in here to problems that no longer exist? So in a sense, a, a program or a, or a solution got running to solve a problem, but the problem's long since solved and no one's told the program to stop running. I was talking to a client a while ago and I was using this idea of what solution is still running to a problem that no longer exists. This person's retired and she said, I always felt in my work that I wasn't uh, respected or uh, clever enough or that I'd always be sort of looked at as being somewhat inferior. And so that was how she felt. Her solution was to have a lot of books. She said, I always felt if I had a lot of books in my house, then I'd be taken seriously and I'd be you know, I'd be respected for, for being knowledgeable and academic. But of course, now that, you know, she's retired, uh, there's no one really to judge whether she's, you know, academic or, or good enough to do the job because she's, you know, retired and doesn't need to do the job. The problem is that the house is full of books and now the house is so full of books that actually it's necessary to, to, to declutter the house to get rid of some stuff. But still likes to buy books. Now, you know, buying books is a nice thing, but in principle, Buying books and having books and keeping books is the solution to the problem of feeling inferior or not good enough or not, uh, not going to be respected by colleagues. So buying books is a, pro is a solution to a problem that no longer exists. So that's quite an interesting example. Another interesting example, I think, is from the world of feeling anxious and feeling fearful. Often, things that happen to us in life are very frightening. You know, we get a tremendous shock. It's, a, it's like, a, like a road traffic accident, for instance, or any kind of experience where you feel you might die, or really any kind of panic experience where you feel that, you know, you're gonna lose control of yourself. That's very frightening. It's very difficult to tolerate. 
and so what we do is we try to manage it as best we can now you wouldn't necessarily know why you had this if it was an accident of course you understand but if, if it's just like a panic attack out of the blue you wouldn't necessarily know why you had that experience so you have to manage it right you've got to create a solution to manage that problem well a lot of times it's avoiding things you know if you, if you have a panic attack when you're driving you avoid driving on the motorway for instance or, or roads where it's hard to get off in case you lose control of yourself so a solution is sometimes it's okay and sometimes it's not okay but we tend to run solutions far longer than we need to um, because the problem no longer exists so once you understand the panic experience for instance and once you get a little bit of practice with breathing and some grounding techniques and some of the CBT stuff well you know the problem of panic really goes away it, it's very hard to have a panic attack once you start really uh, working on not having a panic attack but avoiding the things that you started to avoid that's much harder to overcome because you're still running the solution to a problem that no longer exists so if you want to change some element of your life how about this find the smallest thing that you can recognize as being the thing that you want to change and ask yourself this problem what solution am I still running to this problem what solution am I uh, keeping in play even though the problem that I'm experiencing might not exist in the I think it does if you can find a really small thing and you can change it everything else has to change because of course we're a system and in a system everything has to run smoothly otherwise the system doesn't run so what solutions are you still running for problems that no longer exist have a think about it it sounds like a kind of a mysterious kind of statement but actually you know it's interesting and it has the potential to help you just to focus on some stuff that in fact is completely redundant and you can get rid of it in your life see how you get on let me know how it uh, how it sits with you and let me know how you get on with it mm -hmm.